It is a privilege to visit with the Clark women's basketball coach, Courtney Boyd. And it's always a privilege to get to visit with you, coach. You've been on the channel a few times before, but now coming on as a national champion. The Clark Pride won the 2023 NAI Women's Basketball Championship this past week. I know there are a lot of things to celebrate, and, and I want to talk about that, but a 63 63- 52 victory over defending champions Thomas Moore in the championship game. So, Coach, let's just start right there. Congratulations on the win and the national championship. Thank you so much um, for all of it, for having me and just, you know, recognizing our our women's basketball program. So thank you for that. Uh, discussing the win is not easy to do. I There's not – there's too many things to be said, but I don't know how to put it into words. So – uh, the most genuine thing that I can say, and I, I've said it a million times as well, and um, followed up by watching the genuine smiles and excitement, um, sprinting onto the floor and embracing each other as a team, uh, watching the confetti fall in person, watching it fall on you and not from the stands or not from the TV. Uh, that It's just a, a little bit of a surreal moment. And I think that this team, more than any team, has earned it. They've spent a lot of time with each other, whether it was through injuries or heartache or wins and losses. Um, they just, there's a lot of things that have gone into this team and, and that win over Thomas Moore was not easy. It, it was uh, too close for comfort going in, going into the fourth quarter and they're in the fourth quarter for a little while. So we, we kind of took the bull by the horns and, and relied on things that we knew that we needed to execute on. And, um, there we were standing underneath the confetti with the trophy in our hand. So the red banner is ours now and uh, nobody can take it out away from this group. All right. I have to ask, since you mentioned confetti a couple of times there, somebody saved some confetti, right? That that goes in the trophy case too, right? We might have more confetti than anybody knows what to do with. I think fanny packs and pockets and all kinds of kids walked away with it in their shoes. So I think we're in a good spot for that. Okay, just checking. I know that's that's important <laughs> though. Uh, Coach, not only the first national championship for the women's basketball program, it's the first national championship for the athletic department as a whole. I'm sure that's something that's been talked about this this week so far. So tell us a little bit about what that means. Uh, it, it's an incredible thing for a university, and you never know what that feels like or what that looks like until it happens. And fortunately enough for women's basketball, uh, we were able to start that trend. I've had a handful of coaches come up to me and say that now we've set the bar. Um, thank you for laying the blueprint, you know, all of those things. And as a coach, you know what exactly what that means. You know that now hopefully other coaches are following and they, they are able to set their standard and expectations uh, because they know that it's, it's doable. They know that it's a reachable goal. So uh, it started with our athletic department. Obviously, it started with our team, followed by our athletic department. But um, the ability to do the things that we needed to do as a university, and I've said this probably a million times before, but we hosted our, our opening rounds here. Uh, and if we don't have anybody in the stands, then why would we want to host our opening rounds? So our fan support, um, our families that are taking sacrifices, uh, whether it's my personal family um, you know, taking time away from what they're doing so I can be here and there and everywhere for the last six months or the families of the players and the coaching staff, um, you know, sacrificing their time for the things that we've just done in the last six months. And then the university as a whole, as far as being away from the classroom, being away from the expectations there. So we talked about when when we won it, uh, now, now we've won it as a university. So we are a national championship university now. And uh, we're hoping that when people say women's basketball, congrats to women's basketball, someone corrects them and says, congrats to Clark University. That's nice. I, I appreciate that perspective. Uh, Coach, a 13 to 2 run to end the championship game win, 63 52. You all were tied at 50 apiece. You mentioned uh, really close coming down to the wire there. A nice run, but uh, with 52 points, that I think highlights what. You've talked about before, even on this channel, is is that uh, your teams play defense, and that's uh, something that's big. So holding the defending national champions to just 52 points. But having said that, then, I want to talk a little bit of offense because I want to mention Tina Ubel, who uh, had nine points and five boards in the championship game alone, but she also, over the course of the tournament, ran, become, became the all-time leading scorer for Clark. So uh, talk about her play. Um, Tina Ubel has been nothing short of – 
unbelievable for this program. And fortunately for us, we've been able to have her for five years. Uh, unfortunately, COVID happened. Fortunately for us, it allowed us to have her for another season. And there were some things that went on during the tournament um, out of her control. And whether she went down with an injury, she wasn't able to finish the Lewis Clark game. Uh, she actually w lost a family member during the tournament. So there were a lot of things that went on with Tina Ubel that um, as she always does, she relied on basketball to be the source of uh, relief where she could get the enjoyment and, and, you know, get some, do some things for other people other than herself. And there for a little bit in our first game, uh, we gave her a hard time. Did she even remember what she did when she went off for 10 straight points or whatever it was? And uh, she did, she knew that, that, that this was going to be the game where she felt like she could get us started. Uh, we had a little bit of a mismatch that benefited us and she took advantage of that. And it was just something that, that Tina's, you know, kind of always prided herself on and she, she made sure that she brought the fun to this group. So for her to go out being the all time leading scorer, she's played in the most games at Clark. She's started the most games at Clark. I mean, and, and, and I could go on, um, but for her to, to be able to have that accolade on top of 1,000-point scores and all the other things, uh, Tina brought a little bit different, different element to our team, and she made sure that we kept light of the situation. And so when she had success, it was, it was easy to cheer for her. We're speaking with Coach Courtney Boyd from Clark, the national champion Clark women's basketball team here on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach Boyd is now the NAI National Coach of the Year as well, and I want to congratulate you for that honor, taking your team beyond the quarterfinals. So now the first Fab Four, first championship game, and, of course, first championship as well. I got some play from some other players as well. I, I know a, a whole team and, and all of the staff involved in, in, in warning mention here. I do want to mention a couple, though. Again, Nicole McDermott, who is also named All-American this week too. A double double in the title game with 17 points and 10 boards. She had a good tournament too. She had a great tournament. Um, there were a lot of a lot of things that didn't go her way throughout the season. They, there were times where you know she felt like she wasn't putting as many points on the board as she needed to. So she adjusted and became a big time rebounder for us. There were times where she was guarding you know one of their better offensive players. Uh, she found other ways to bring things to our game throughout the regular season. And then when we got to the tournament, she turned it on. And she also went down with a, an injury. We weren't sure if it was um, a really bad sprain or a stress fracture at the time. She went down in the, in the Fab Four game and she wasn't sure what it was gonna look like the next day. So she rehabbed herself and made sure she focused in and for her to come back, uh, should have probably been in a boot and only played and not warmed up and done all of those things. but. Um, for her to come back and, and get a double-double, it just was a mindset. And all morning she was worried that if she did play, the minute she did play was going to hurt her team. She was worried that that was going to affect her team negatively. And so we discussed that the only thing that was going to hinder her team from that, that time on until game time was her approach. And so she was able to flip her mindset. She was able to you know, kind of come to terms with maybe not being able to be 100%. But um, whatever she put on the floor, the product that she put on the floor, she knew she was going to be confident with. And it miraculously turned into a double-double, which we are not mad about, uh, which clearly <laughs> helped us uh, right on our way to the championship. Coach, I again, I appreciate the perspective that you bring to these things. What, what a great way to approach that. You got good play, really, from everyone. We mentioned that. Your seniors and your upperclassmen. Uh, and it seemed like the, the, the seniors, those upperclassmen, really provided not only – uh, what was necessary over the course of the tournament run, but all year. They did. Uh, there's something to be said for veteran teams. And some people, uh, you know, you'll hear some coaches say, freshmen just go out and play freely in your sophomore year. You maybe are in a slump and your junior year, you turn it on because you want everybody to know who you are. And then your senior year, you either have a really good senior year or you just kind of get through it. Um, if that, If there's truth to that, then lucky for us, all of our seniors had really good senior years. Uh, if there's no truth to that, then uh, I think this team probably defines the fact that when you're a senior, you take you take pride, no pun intended, in uh, what your team what your team can do, and uh, you you have to trust one another. Every single one of our seniors um, brought a little bit something different to the table. Whether it was Gianna Mickles and her vocal leadership, 
Uh, she was coming off of a labrum shoulder surgery. She didn't play the first handful of games on the beginning of the season, and she still was able to lead from the bench and then got herself right back into the starting lineup. Or Skylar Culbertson, who has been a starter for a handful of years and just we wished that people would press us so she could break the press single-handedly so then they would have to change their game plan. Uh, Emma Kelchin, who has changed her game in the last five seasons, and then obviously Tina Ubel, who we've spoken about. But everybody brought a little bit different to the to the table, which made them a great senior class. It's hard to do with just one person or or just one senior. But when everybody's on board for the same goal, uh, it makes the coaching job a lot easier. They're looking at you saying, Coach, can we run this? Or maybe we should take a timeout. Or uh, that girl's doing something different than the scouting report said. And you just trust it. And so when there's that trust and respect factor, with your veteran players. Um, it, it's a lot easier just to kind of walk the sidelines with a smirk on your face until the buzzer goes off. <laughs> well, Coach, a sixth season and a great way to to culminate this sixth season for you there at Clark. But, I mean, it's been a 20-win-plus program since you got there, and you just continue to improve and, and uh, set a new record for wins and then set a new record for wins, and last year another new record for wins. Well, 33-4 and four, – Another new record for wins at the program. So congratulations once again for doing that. But what do you do to continue that that pace? Mathematically, you can only go so high. But uh, what do you do to continue that pace and and look toward next year? And I'm I'm sure this is as uh, anyone might mention. This is good for recruiting too. It is. It really is good for recruiting. Um, and you, you we just have to make sure that we continue to recruit the right people. We, when the product that we put on the floor is not always the biggest, fastest, strongest. It's not always uh, the most athletic, but it is the group that is going to play to the buzzer. It is the group that is going to play for each other. Um, and I think that that's how you sustain it. And is every year going to be a championship season? Also mathematically says no. Uh, I, that doesn't happen for anybody, regardless of what level or what school or, you know, what, what opportunities you're given. But um, to sustain the success and at the rate that we're sustaining it, you have to have the right people. And uh, the way that we run our program, we had we had one honorable mention All-American on a national championship team. I think there's something to be said for that. And I know All-Americans come from stats, uh, but if you were behind the scenes with this group, uh, you would say character-wise they're all All-Americans, as cheesy as that sounds. Uh, but I think that that's what brought us together. And... Um, when you do win a championship, you do rally around each other. But regardless of the wins and losses, um, it takes every single one of them. And when you get a group to buy into that, then winning is just winning is the extra. So luckily for us in the last couple of years, um, they've taken it upon themselves to make that their expectation. And that makes it a lot easier as a coaching staff to at the beginning of the year, we don't set goals uh, because the team has already set their own expectations. At the beginning of the year, we don't talk about more than four or five team rules because the team has already set their own expectations. Uh, so when they're holding themselves accountable and they're holding themselves to that high standard, you just hope that you recruit the right people that fall into place as those graduate that to replace that same personality and that same high character. Well, Coach, success to you as you can continue what you're doing there at Clark. Congratulations again on the national championship, not only to you, but to your entire staff and, and the team and, and the athletic department as well. And I just appreciate you sharing and talking about this because I, I, I've, I've gained a lot from, from the time getting to visit with you. Coach Courtney Boyd from the Clark Pride National Champions in Women's Basketball. Coach, thank you as always for taking time with us today here on the Summit. Thank you so much for having me. and and, and understanding what it's like to be part of the Clark Pride.